Thank you, Brother Judah, for introducing my text. Um, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 today. Um, and I'd appreciate it if you turn with me there because we're, we're going to um, focus on this passage. I'm not really going to focus on a specific topic, but rather we're going to look at this passage and see what we can learn about sanctification through it. So 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, starting in verse 9, and we'll, we'll keep going back to this text throughout the evening. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So we were wicked men pursuing wicked practices, but, but, what happened? What, what turned us from this path? Such were some of you, but then you washed yourself, and you sanctified yourself, and you justified yourself. Well, look at you. You just got a hold of yourself. Well, that's not what my Bible says. The wording here, ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified. See, it shows very clearly that this washing and this sanctification and this justification comes from some source outside of ourself. Amen. See, ye are sanctified. It's, it's very evident that this wasn't something that we did. See, all these things are done to us, not by us. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. So, so Jesus Christ is made unto us sanctification. This, this is his work that he does in us. These things are done to us by Christ Jesus. So, the passage says that we were wicked people pursuing wicked practices, but, so what really happened? What changed it? What turned us off of that course? It says, we are washed. Revelation 1.5 says that Jesus Christ washed us from our sins in his own blood. We are sanctified. 1 Peter 2.9 says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Well, doesn't this sound like sanctification to you? You are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is what happened. This is how we came from being some of those. He said, such were some of you. That's what happened, is we were sanctified and we are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. So the, the sa this sanctification is how our path was changed. This is how we went from pursuing sin to pursuing God. We were once the kingdom of darkness, but we were called out of that. We were separated by sanctification out of our sinful path and into the paths of righteousness. This is what, self, this is what sanctification does. It calls us out of that path and into God's path. Romans 6, 17 says, But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Amen. 
So, so what is this doctrine that was delivered to us? Well, part of it was God calling us out of our servitude to sin and into serving righteousness. See, it was, it was the call of sanctification. He said, you were the servants of sin, but you obeyed that form of doctrine. Part of this doctrine was the call to sanctification. God was separating us for holiness. So, so it, it, it was through sanctification that we were turned around. The sanctification that God is working in us called us away from sin, and it calls us to God. Now, Abraham had a very similar experience. In Joshua 24, verse 2, it says, And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood, and led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his seed, and gave him Isaac. So Abraham's family is, is like we were, serving idols. But what happened? God called him away from that. God set him apart to be his own. See, God sanctified him. This is what sanctification is about, is God calling us from the sin and setting us apart for his work. He, God has done the same thing for us. He's called us away from our sinful idols, and he's called us to himself. Now, Exodus chapter 40, God was giving Moses instructions about uh, setting up the tabernacle for the first time. And he says to Moses, And thou shalt take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is therein, and shalt hollow it, and the vessels thereof, and it shall be holy. And thou shalt take... I lost my place. And thou shalt anoint the altar of the burnt offering and all its vessels, and sanctify the altar, and it shall be an altar most holy. And thou shalt anoint the laver and the foot, and sanctify it. And thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and wash them with water. And thou shalt put upon Aaron the holy gar garments, and anoint him, and sanctify him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt bring his sons, and clothe them with coats, and, th and thou shalt anoint them as thou didst anoint their father, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. For their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations." So did you notice any recurring theme through this? Um, I noticed that anything that was going to be used in the tabernacle had to be set apart. Yeah. It had to be sanctified yeah. before it could be used for the service of God. Right. See, and our text tells us that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, as it was in the tabernacle, Everything to be used has to be set apart. In order for God to use you in his kingdom, you must be sanctified. So this, this is just another thing that we can see from this passage. It says, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but ye are sanctified. See, sanctification gives us access to the kingdom of God. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but ye are sanctified. Amen. Now, the, now, our text starts, starts out by describing who we were. And over and over in the Bible, we see, we see the same, same type of reminder. We see reminders of who we used to be. Uh, Titus chapter 3, for example, verse 3 says... For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly, 
Through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And also in Colossians chapter 1, verse 21, it says, And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. So when we see who we were and who we are now, this demonstrates the extent of God's sanctifying work in us. Without this type of perspective, we couldn't, we couldn't really see how, how big, how extensive this sanctification is. So, so this text really gives context to everything we're talking about this week, is it shows us this sanctification was not a small thing. Because he took us from being those who will not inherit the kingdom of God and made us into heirs of God. See, we were serving diverse lusts and pleasures, but now we are serving God. It, it makes you wonder, well, what happened? Sanctification, that's what happened. We were alienated from God and enemies of God, but now we are holy an unblameable and unreprovable in God's sight. We were sometimes darkness, but now we are light in the Lord. See, this, this just shows us the extent of God's sanctification. Took us from darkness all the way to light. Amen. This is, this is a, a quite a stark contrast. And it, it, just, it just shows to us the mighty work of God in sanctifying us. See, that we, can, we can start to appreciate this sanctification when we realize where we started and what this sanctification did in us. He's, he's completely changed us. So in summary, we learn from this passage that um, this, sanctifi this sanctifying work is obviously done by Christ. This, this is not something we did ourselves, and, and this passage shows very clearly, ye are sanctified. This is, this is the work of Christ. Sanctification is, is the thing that took us from the unrighteous and made us new. See, this, sanctification is what changed our path, or at least it's, it's a part of it. This is what God did in salvation. Um, also, we learned that sanctification gives us access to the kingdom of God because before we, uh, we were the unrighteous, we, we could not inherit the kingdom of God, but we were sanctified. We are sanctified. And this sanctification is extensive enough to call us from great wickedness into the kingdom of God. And... And I was talking to Brother Dan about this earlier, and it, this passage lists some, some things that we would all agree are very bad, but, but, um, but you know, any sin, uh, the punishment for any sin is hell. And it, it just shows you about how bad even what we would consider little sins are. And I, we, we need to realize how bad sin is from God's perspective. And, and when you can realize that, that any sin will damn you, then we see this sanctification. E even if you don't think you've done anything very bad, this is still, this is, this is a very amazing work. That God was able to take us from who we were to who we are. So my response to this is thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift.